Hello, uh, this is Hari, and uh, welcome to the uh, Seek App Delivery meeting. Uh, we don't have a lot of uh, agenda for today's meeting. Uh, I'm still waiting for uh, more people to join, and uh, Alois is also over there. So if anyone wants to introduce yourself uh, to the Seek, and it's really welcome. I'll, I'll go ahead and say hello because there's <laughs> other people on here that I don't know. I have been here before, but it's been some time. Cornelia Davis, I'm the CTO at WeWorks. Oh, uh, congratulations for a new move, by the way. Thank you. It's good to be here. Okay, so since uh, we are now familiar with each other and uh, so let me give a quick update on uh, today's agenda uh, because we're talking about uh, some updates uh, regarding to the some working items uh, in the C gap theory um so the first update is regarding to oh let me share the screen So we do have the uh, first update, which, which is regarding to the uh, SIG app delivery uh, landscape. Oh, I will call that the CNCF app delivery landscape. So I, I will add a little bit background here, uh, because uh, if you look at today's uh, CNCF landscape, you will notice that there is a section which name is, uh, I think which name is application definition or management or something, which is really confusing because it included, for example, database and storage as part of the application. And it also has a very um, high level category or classify regarding to the components in the application delivery ecosystem. So uh, we began to figure out that we need to find a way to uh, refactor this part of the landscape to uh, the, 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 high, the high level idea, uh, which we also proposed to the TOC and got feedback is to create a new tab. So it will create, we will try to create a new tab on the landscape, which name is like uh, uh, application delivery or something like that. It is quite similar to what serverless have today. So it will be an entire new tab, including the, um, the several categories uh, listed in the, um, dictionary of CGAP delivery. And uh, so this has been um, proposed to TOC and we think uh, we're all going to this way. But this does not solve a question, which also uh, I think I've raised a lot of discussion recently is about how can we find a way to explain what's inside of this landscape. For example, there's something, there's a project in the landscape but how can we explain to end users what this project is used for and uh, when should you use that? So this is right now for, for now is out of scope of the SIG app delivery landscape, but we also think it's, um, it's a necessary thing to do for our next working item. I think also, I also think that Alois have some uh, feedback on that. So we will, we, we will probably, probably discuss uh, regarding to uh, that part uh, in next meeting. I, I don't know if Eloy is which one today. So we, we, we'll discuss about that. So the eventually, I think the goal is that we want to publish a white paper. Um, the white paper uh, is sponsored by Seek App Delivery and CNCF, which will try to explain uh, what is happening inside this landscape, what is exactly a project is focusing on and uh, how we can and users benefit from that. So this is a quick update from the things uh, application delivery landscape. I think the next action is we are trying to draft a uh, proposal uh, or for the for the landscape GitHub repo um, to highlight a uh, a, sim a, sim a simple version of how the new tab will maybe looks like. Uh, that will be the next uh, action item. So this is the first update. And the second update is regarding to the working groups. And I, I just also talked with Alois regarding to that. So we, we noticed that 
the working group, the working groups, I mean, we now have actually two working groups. Uh, the first one is the operator working group, and the second one is air gapped, air, air gapped working group. So we noticed that the two working groups didn't make a lot of progress in the past few months. And I think we also think that um, there are some blockers uh, to continue the existing discussions in the working groups. Uh, some of our some are related to the uh, operator definition, and some are related to the best practice uh, best practices of air gapped uh, environment application delivery. So we are proposing that we move those discussion back to the SIG. Um, this is a general idea, and not determined yet. So we just. Uh, we are just think about that. So we also would like, would like to see uh, what do you think uh, if we move the discussions in the working groups back to the six, so we can focus or we can uh, gather people discussing on those uh, discussions instead of splitting them into different meetings. So what do you think? Any ideas regarding to that? I mean, is is the lack of progress? What what is that telling us? I mean, the whole reason that we spun off into those working groups was because it seemed like it was pretty specialized, and um, and so did we disprove that hypothesis that there was enough interest to do that? Is it lack of interest? I mean, I, I suppose that's some of the analysis that we need to do. Like, why why are those things stalled? Yeah, I think. One observation I had have recently is that, so the reason we actually move those discussion to a separate working group is actually because those discussion actually, actually raise a lot of, you know, uh, I will say conflicts in the uh, SIG meeting. So a lot of things are not, cannot be uh, fixed. A lot of things cannot be determined. So every time we have, a discussion, for example, related to the operator definition. It maybe lasts like one hour. <laughs> that is the issue we had before. So those discussions are really need to find a place to be um, tangled with the expert from the operator ecosystem to fix that. But that's why we actually created an operator working group to discuss that topic. But the recent progress is which is unexpected because uh, I think the community began to think about, okay, this may be an issue that cannot be solved by simply uh, discussion or publish the white paper regarding to that, because there are different interested parties. For example, uh, Red Hat, there, ha there are uh, people from Chorus before, and there are people from Red Hat, there are people from Microsoft, and they debate with each other, but it seems very hard to reach the conclusion from my perspective. I don't know how we can fix that, but I think the first step we want to do is move the discussion back to SIG so we can see what's happening there. Maybe we want to stop some of the discussions or we just, uh, or we just uh, you know, try to publish something that to explain what's happening uh, in the um, related to discussion. If you check the previous discussion, it's pretty, it's pretty long in the, in, in the SIG after delivery uh, mailing list. But I don't think there's conclusion regarding to that part. So, I mean, from a personal perspective, I, I love the idea of moving it back into the state because as you know, I, it's difficult for me to make even one meeting every two weeks. It's even more yes. difficult to make three meetings every two weeks. And so I'd love to have those topics discussed in one forum. Um, it'll be interesting to see if we end up back in the in the pickle that we were in, which caused the spinoff, which is now it, it consumes the entire agenda and it's contentious. But like, you know, it's it's hard to argue with the the logic here as well. I see. Yeah, this is also uh, what we also think about that. Maybe on to Furkers people on the same meeting, I mean, on a single meeting instead of split the discussions uh, in multiple meetings. It's really hard, especially yeah. considering a lot of people are working from home. They have a lot of meeting every day. So 
it will be easier to handle the expressions uh, regarding to that part. Okay, thank you for the input. Um, so uh, another discussion is regarding to the air gapped uh, application delivery uh, working group. And this is actually a very interesting topic. Uh, we mentioned that uh, several times before. Uh, we also think it's a uh, very useful uh, tool or very useful technology regarding to the application delivery uh, ecosystem. But that in that part, in that working group, I my observation is that it's still not quite there. So other people have their own way to do air gapped application delivery. But the thing, a thing we think we think it's you know, missing today is that how can we do that in a common way? Or is there is there already technology to support that, or we want to pro or we have to propose something to solve that problem? So I think the issue is still very early stage, and uh, people have different ways to do their own air gapped delivery uh, in different environments. So I don't know if you guys have it, you folks have any experience regarding to air gapped uh, application delivery and uh, whether we want to how can we move this direction um forward especially make it become a mainstream discussion or mainstream topic in this ecosystem yeah i think what the group was working on is collecting a number of uh, best practices how people are doing it i think they were not like super successful doing this i think there's one example in there still um but having more examples of people who are actually doing this and engaging with them is uh, would uh, definitely be helpful there. I'm just not sure how we get people to, to really do this. Uh, this is also maybe something with the end user community to engage, who, who wants to share best practices, uh, what they're doing. I think it's less about, I think we're not at the stage where we write that one white paper, this is how you do your gaps deliveries. I think we are more at, okay, this is what we did. This is what worked. This is uh, what did not work. This is what we're doing, but we, what we don't like doing on a more anecdotal point of view. But unfortunately, historically, uh, yeah, I think we, we also didn't have a lot of, of, of uptake uh, for, for these meetings. Um, there were a couple of project presentations, um, but I think that's what we're kind of like struggling a bit with now that we don't have, in general, the project reviews so much to like getting this disengagement model model going. But I think it would still be worth, um, it has been on the agenda for a while, how maybe people in the telco uh, seek work with this because initially this was coming from the telcos. But that would be good, just collecting, trying to get that set, that number of examples um, up that we have, have available. It, it's just funny because the reason why this working group exists was last year's North American KubeCon. Um, that was the primary feedback that, that Harry and I got. Can you work on air-gapped? So we started to work on air-gapped and it seems to be, I think below that critical mass momentum um, that, that, that we have right now. I think active outreach is probably the best uh, that, that, that we can do here. And telco might be our first stop. And uh, I can take this, this as an action item reaching out. Other what do you think, Cornelia, what we could do? Yeah, no, I agree. And, and um, I'll tell you from the WeWorks perspective, um, as, as I'm sure you can imagine, we think that GitOps plays a role in air -gapped. Um And we actually have uh, customers folks that we're working with, some, some of whom are quite public. Uh, Deutsche Telekom, for example, speaks publicly about the work that they're doing with Flux and those types of things. And we have a great relationship with some of those telcos. And so I'm sitting here listening and, and, and you weren't on earlier when I kind of semi, you know, had a, a, an awkward apology for not showing up to these things for quite some time. I'm renewing my, my lock on my calendar for these meetings. <laughs> Um, I would love to work on this um, and put some cycles into it because we, we have customers that would be very keen um, that we can represent. So, yeah, I think we should work on this. And I think you're right. I think telcos is a really great place to start. 
Yeah, so then as an action, I mean, if you could maybe get some of your customers interested to to present and maybe share that success story, we have a document in case you, I'll, I'll put it in the meeting notes later, or you can reach out to me directly if you can find it, what the working group had in there. And I'll reach out directly also to the telco SIG regarding this. So maybe we can, I think for us, it's like really building up momentum right now. Uh, I think we are in a, like we had time right now where as, as Harry mentioned a lot of people and a lot of meetings so value creation is more important than ever to get people into yet another zoom call and also making content consumable in a different format is I think helpful so okay I'm take, giving myself an action item I think that's also a lesson learned for me to some extent in the past we were just talking about stuff but not action iteming yeah I'm just typing up the notes here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I mistyped your name here. Luckily, mm -hmm. Google is smart. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I think that's good. Just let's try to move it there. Yep. I mean, one thing that could also easily be done is just posting it on the TUC mailing list at some point if you really want it to work and we have some use cases and we want to do more. Uh, it might just turn out to be a bit of spam, but it's currently not super active. And if people are really working on those topics, we might also get some feedback there. So I know that a lot of people have I subscribed to the SIG, sorry, to the TUC mailing list. It's not what it's actually intended for, but there's not that much going on uh, right now. And we might also might get more visibility for this but i think having a couple of presentations already available is good because once you reach out to people and say hey we will want to talk about this it's good to say well there's already three examples in there where things look like yeah. uh, it's not just like inviting them over to the desert of documents and let me find the document right now Yeah, and I, I just also mentioned the uh, operator working group, and I don't know if you have any feedback or ideas regarding to that part. Um, so if, if you look at the operator working group, uh, uh, they, like the operator docs, so this whole thing started with the CNCF wanting as a new operator definition that goes a bit further than the one that's currently in the Kubernetes um, documentation, which means, which more or less states it's a CRD and the controller behind it. To, to be more specific, uh, what to do there, we have this document. And I think it just needs at least that final push to get it to a V0.5 release. I think it has just been sitting around. I think just, this is again, to some extent more in the chores area, just going over this document and saying, okay, this is what we came up with so that we feel comfortable sharing this on the TUC uh, in, in an upcoming TUC update and also back to the TUC, see what they think about it. Uh, the, the, the problem I kind of had, why this is, wasn't moving forward because we always go back to like these fundamental discussions. And they go very far from, we say, well, we don't want, we want to include use cases. We want to include this tool. And then it goes all the way. And we had discussions like it goes, went all the way up um, to, well, I want to talk to my non-technical CTO and explain to them what an, an operator is because I have to write it. And he kind of tells me I don't have to do this because Kubernetes is doing everything anyway. So I think we can solve all problems for 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 everybody, honestly. 
I'd love to, but I think we can't. So first of all, I think the document number one needs cleanup and uh, I think I'll just get a good glass of wine and just do the cleanup of this document. This is just accepting, exactly accepting edits. And then at the very beginning, I think we all should have this discussion. We can put it on the next agenda item. What do we really want to achieve? And my intention at the beginning was somebody is writing an application on Kubernetes. They're here, they heard about operators and they want to understand what they should be using them for or whether they should not be using them for. But it like became this thing that was like this constantly moving target. And uh, I, I, I realized I'd like to make the discussion about the like, most valuable thing for people uh, to, to know when it comes to operator, what are the, the questions that people usually come up with and what they, they don't understand. I'm trying to find this document. I haven't, I also have to admit I haven't opened it in a while, honestly. But number one, when I find it, I'll, I really look into just getting it to the point where, uh, yeah, where we have it, uh, that we can review it and discuss it the next time. And I think maybe that's the best approach. I'll, I'll try, I'll work on cleaning up the document, share it on the mailing list the next meeting. We get to a conclusion, what we want to have in there and what we don't want to have in there. It's like this really felt something that kept going in circles. And whenever we had some, uh, we had written something down, somebody in that group came up with, no, we can't do it that way. We have to go in an entirely different direction. And, and that will never get us to a point where um, we, we reach a document. Uh, that that's that that's of value to people out there. I mean, I don't know what you think. What what the value of this document would be? At some point, it could be a guidance on how to implement certain things because I think certain things are highly unclear how to do it. Ideally, with an operator. There are a number of best practices that could be condensed into, like Microsoft has a good one, how you should split out things into different operators. Yeah, I think I've been going a bit back and forth here, but number one, cleaning it up and I think being really clear on the purpose of this document. And uh, then, then getting the work done. I think that's why it kind of got stuck because it was at some point frustrating writing something and somebody said, no, we have to do something completely different. And obviously me not even being able to find it right now. Yeah, and I just dropped a link in the chat, but it's yeah. not that. That was just a couple of user stories. Um, it isn't the doc that you're referring to. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going through the- oh, That's the air kept one, yeah. I'm going through the meeting notes trying to find it. Um, anyway, it doesn't seem to be linked from the notes. So mailing list. Yeah, I can also take this as some homework. I think documents should be easier to find if we want uh, people to engage. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hello, is that possible on the chat? Was it this document? That's the document from um, Cray, I think. That's the Cray document. Yeah, that's the user story from Cray. So let's just, yeah, I think we can all agree that, it, that we should have like this one page that we go to where we find all those things and it kind of doesn't exist and that should be fixed. What we did in the, but I haven't been in a while as well. Yeah, I don't know how many people know this, but we actually have a, a GitHub repo, like a, 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 where actually all of the things could be linked to. I'm just posting it in here. 
And I think that's the, and obviously we have air gapped in there, that's where we would find it, but we don't have, ah, we don't have yeah. the, the operator pieces in there. That's where you found that document, hopefully. That's where I found user stories, yeah. User um, stories, yeah. But I did not find. I think that's also the only one that exists, honestly. That's the only document? Mm hmm Well, there's okay. a charter and there's this one, yeah, so. Okay. Oh, I yeah. It. I found it. <laughs> Did you just find it too? I remember no, I just. Saying, I think I'm I'm checking out this project right now, just creating and reading MD, and I'm just posting it in there. That's what. I'm that doing last for. one I think, is the document that you had in your head. Yeah. Operator definition working document. Mm -hmm. So what I just did in the repo, I just created a documents MD file. I just created a documents file, which should have that. Uh, and I'm going to paste things in there. Yeah, I think we have to do some, and thanks for helping, we have to do some housekeeping here. Uh, that should then also help people to, to engage. Yeah, that's the working document and it has a lot of comments and I think it just needs some, it just needs some, some cleanup and yeah, yeah I mean, there we have the director of non-Kubernetes company to understand what an operator is. Is this really our goal? Yeah. I mean, I think that, that that's a lot of unclosed comments means that yeah. we haven't reached consensus. Typically. Yeah, so what I I will do, I'll go over the documents and see like some of them you could easily accept. There's just some text formatting stuff in there. And I'll at least comment to all the people. Also, some people never followed up. I think now, for example, I asked, Matt was complaining about the Helm description and then asked him, okay, please, can you just make it, make it to what you think it should be? And then people are also not replying back. Uh, so I'll go over it and uh, I'll do some housekeeping there as well. I think whenever I type a link, I never know the 100% correct syntax in in markup. I feel like I always get the braces wrong. So I'll, I'll work over this and try to create also some engagement and um, 
So we then push the post it to the mailing list to also get it beyond that, that document. So this is where I started to put some some docs and obviously some more cleanup work to be done here. I actually personally feel it's very hard to reach any conclusion on the operator definition documentation because uh, the different interested parties actually have different opinions on that. So it's a little hard to reach a accurate conclusion regarding to that definition. And that's my personal opinion. Maybe that's also our feedback at some point that we, we tried it and we can't reach a conclusion. Yeah, we can also write down that the, the, the conclusion is that there's no conclusion because <laughs> everybody have deep opinion regarding to that. That actually might be a fair conclusion at some point. Yeah, it, it's true. I think uh, there are multiple issues there. So the operator itself should not uh, go into the way that compete with something like Helm or package management, but somehow the Red Hat go to that direction. That actually already create confusion in the technical part. And we can't solve that problem. It's a decision that operator folks made. And on the other hand, uh, Helm should definitely focus on package management instead of trying to you know, uh, fix the uh, day two operations issues. So they two are, are overlapping today. That's why if you want to make clear separation between those two by something like operator definition, I don't think it actually works. It, there is a unrelated topic, which is actually uh, uh, GitOps. I actually think about GitOps for uh, several times. So I do see there are a lot of possibilities to improve the interoperability of the GitOps tools. I, I noticed that uh, Flux CD project is trying to uh, work in something on the Flux V2, which defined as several, I think I will call them building blocks. For example, uh, how to interact with Git, how to, um, how to interact with Helm, how to leverage, customize, how to um, drive the state machine of the, um, GitOps workflow, so they, they basically split GitOps into multiple building blocks. And similar effort also happens to the uh, Argo CD part, and they already split something which name is GitOps engine. And uh, I think they're also discussing about how to define, uh, I, will, I will call them standard interfaces between Git and the uh, reconciling control loop in the server side how to define a, a bunch of standard interface between the different renders like uh, Helm, Customize, Q, and how to add your own plugins to do that. So I don't know if there's any possibility that we can uh, involve the effort in a SIG application delivery. And uh, is anything we can help or uh, especially when uh, VWorks folks are actually innovating. So I also hope to see if any ideas regarding GitOps work yeah no i think that's it i think that's a, a great idea what's interesting is of course we you know air gap we're interested in that operators are an important element of doing GitOps the right way and so they're related to all those things but i think what you're bringing up is the possibility that GitOps be kind of a first class entity in, in, that we discuss as opposed to a second class as a part of 
uh, air gap and as a part of operator working group and, and all of those things. And I think that I think the time might be right to do that. Yeah, yeah. One one trend I I actually I'm thinking that essentially that GitOps plus with a plus with the CI pipeline. If you combine them together, you are actually we. I mean the the whole ecosystem are actually creating a fresh new uh, CI CD workflow around the clone native technology stack. Uh, it, it it can be compared to something like Spinnaker but it's fully based on uh, cloud native technology and uh, it's separate CI and CD and use Git as a source of truth at the center. And it's encourage interact, it encourages interoperability instead of a monolithic stack. So I think that is the right direction to go. It's something that CGAP really really want to endorse and to advocate, I mean, but how can we do that? How can we, make the SIG, I mean, make the community engage more in this, I mean, GitOps projects and these ideas. Uh, it's something that we want to think about. And I, I know that VWorks are doing very well here, but how can we do that more, I mean, more collaboratively with the community? I think that is also one direction we're thinking about. It's really important to me. Yeah. Likewise. Um, yeah, this is an idea we, I have. Uh, uh, just to say, this is some ideas I have how to make the SIG collaborate more with the whole community. Uh, there are some topics, I think, indeed, that need the um, involvement from the community as well as the community also <laughs> to use more. So this is something that we want to look at. Want to look at. Yeah, I mean, what, what we could, what, what we had in the charter at some point is, I think what also re goes into like this whole discussion right now where everybody says the CNCF landscape is way too complex. There's like a million tools. I don't even know what to do yeah. with it. Um, having this idea of a test, I had this idea back that we have some kind of like a test bed where we would use technologies and we could plug them in for different things. And this will, could go together nicely. It's like we could have one where we say, okay, we want to combine, for example, OAM with GitOps and would this even fit together? Like we start with very atomic building blocks and then we're trying to build also to the reference model uh, that, that you defined here. We, here we start to define more like complete end-to-end -end, uh, more or less examples. And I think people will be contributing if this is mm -hmm. something where we have like these test pads on the... Mm -hmm. Uh, the app delivery um, uh, or reference why they were, were, were the sick. And most of them have tutorials anyways. So there's nothing where people have to, to start from, from scratch. Like for example, the, the Flux tutorial is, is, is pretty much uh, available um, out of the box. Like how to getting started with specific things and then trying to combine things together. Because like mm -hmm. to that point, combining OAM with a GitOps type of approach is kind of interesting as well. Mm -hmm. How would you do yeah, that? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. So, so what, what, what is this will looks like? It looks like a white paper or some, uh, so how, what is the outcome in your mind? Uh, I, I'd like the outcome ideally to be code. Be code? You mean samples and demos? Yeah. So, so we, we pick a, there are obviously a, a number of very famous sample applications and even if we start with a Hello World one or at least two, well, mm -hmm. and say, okay, let's try to use this with this approach. Let's try to use it with this approach. And that is we are application here. And we really say, that, so your starting point, what you always get is say two or three images on Docker Hub and the basic Kubernetes primitives to deploy this application. Mm -hmm. And now show how your project adds value beyond that. Because if it doesn't add value beyond what I already have, and I just keep control apply stuff, why would I be using it as an end user? I see, I see a point here. Yeah, this is really interesting because it's actually a good place for uh, application delivery stick to host a 
I mean, something like a sample or demo repo to show the user cases for how people use different technologies and how what's the best practice to use certain technology. I think it's also much better than something like a white paper because I don't even pay a lot of time to read those white papers. But I and do. Usually, you want to run code, the demos. Right? Yeah, that'd be a really interesting and, idea. And also. But back when we discussed what we want to do, a lot of things are not part of standard demo applications, which you want to be part, like secrets management mm -hmm. or creden credentials management. Like everybody's using this, this, the sock shop or hipster um, example, which is great. It's a bit too big. As so our experience is we, we only use a subset. We only usually use the card service because we do multi-stage deployments and then it gets like kind of expensive to run it in three or four stages. Um, for for a demo, mm -hmm. but certain aspects of what people have to ship are not really in there. Or um, also like the multi-stage one for me is is one that we are dealing with very often. So how do we manage? Like we have like one application definition that we have to deploy to multiple stages, which have different configurations. And how do we handle an update? How do we separate these kind of, of things? Like, I think having, it's almost like a challenge. We, we create like an application, a very simple one. It doesn't need to be complex. It just needs to have like these things in there. And it's really, how do you, how do you like handle this challenge? How do you handle this one? I think that might be, uh, might be something interesting. Obviously we have to write something. I think the code is not going to be super challenging. This can just be a hello world that asks another hello world for its text. So maybe it's uh, two times 10 lines of Go code. Mm -hmm. But somebody can say, well, but we want in this case, the backend to be scaled 10 times and five times. And here we want it to be blue green deployed. How do we do even specify this? And here we want to do this. And then we can work on scenarios and people can experiment and show their solutions. And I think that could be then really something that is value to, to the cloud native uh, Community at Harry, that's actually where we're going kind of like with the, uh, the, the, the talk we submitted for uh, KubeCon North, North America, like really using projects to do different things and asking what people are dealing with. Mm -hmm. But I think we have to bootstrap it. I think we have to really bootstrap it and come up with two questions and ideally find people who we know who would be interested in doing it to get like this initial momentum because we, we try to have this Let's reach out to the community and ask them to, to do something. Uh, that was always a bit challenging when, when nothing is there. But what we could do, we could like tackle one problem mm -hmm. and then like build the sample or maybe we just write up. But samples are great because people like, to, I also like to run a sample and, and sometimes it's easier to just see the actual code than, um, than read a very long white paper. We can then easily publish about it. We can use CNCF distributions to help to reach more audiences. And I guess people see, ah, they're solving the use case that I'm having. And also, uh, I think you will get DevRel people from various open source and commercial companies to also contribute because usually that, that's what they do. They say, hey, why are they showing this way of secrets management when we, for example, Want to, when, when HashiCorp wants to see how Vault can be used there, and suddenly they have an example on how to be able to do it in Vault, and you can ideally build up a, a library, or that or would expect that the like, Weave has an opinion on how, how GitOps should be done. So I think they would, uh, I hope they would find the resources to then, then contribute. And they wouldn't make it like super complex. I'm just putting it out there, but I think it makes sense to try something like this. It's. I love it. I love it. Sample applications code, code always speaks volumes. So that's a great idea. And then the meetings could also be interactive. Somebody can do a demo and say, yeah, I have to demo it. Also for the future project. Okay, this is the problem that you're solving. Show it uh, based on the sample application. Not the sample application that you have, but like eventually our reference application. Just show us what you can do there. Yeah, but now we have just to put it out to, to volunteers to get the first one running. I mean, we have Sock Shop and Hipster Shop. So as, as I mentioned, my only thing is they're too complex in the amount of services that they're running. If you want to do, especially multi-stage scenarios, they're a bit resource hungry, honestly. 
and they don't cover all the aspects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good idea. I can, I can contribute some um, resources regarding to the uh, demos and samples. Um, because we internally actually did a lot of demos, I can actually try to ask those folks to contribute those back to the community. Uh, and if, if we want to have some, you know, first round of the demos, uh, we are very happy to contribute. That would be amazing. I think that, and then we really have to actively share it out. I think there's, if we have the demos, I think we should cut the videos. I mean, not as professional usually as you do it, Harry. Harry is actually a magician with videos. You can trust me working with him. On <laughs> Let's keep that to secret. <laughs> I'm just saying you're great. You're like the James Bond of uh, making videos. Uh, and yeah, then also like share it on Twitter, um, make, make it easily more easily available. I think that's definitely something we, we should be doing and trying to get more reach. That, that would be great. Let's start with the demos. The cleanup work is great as well. And maybe then next time come to the conclusion of what we do with this operator doc. Maybe mm -hmm. just leave it, leave it as it is today. Mm -hmm. Maybe we don't find have any conclusion. It's going to be still a CRD and a controller. That's as good as yeah. it gets, sorry. All right. So Harry, for then, a minute, we ended up talking about a bunch of really good stuff. Now we just have to get it done. That's always the challenging part. Yeah? That's right. <laughs> we just have, and then we have to put it into the notes. But yeah. I'm doing. That's what I think. Finishing up the notes is what we should use the last ten minutes for. And if, I think Harry, the two of us have note duty, and the rest for you, if you were giving you ten minutes back of your time. Okay, is that it for today then? That's it, yeah, that, that's it for today. We're just yeah, finishing up it. the notes writing here. That's right. what I meant before. So you oh, don't have to watch much. us typing, so we don't. Nope. <laughs> Enough then. Thank you. Good Bye. discussion. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank I really appreciate it. Thanks.